Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the painting I'm bringing you today has the a remarkable title, Tree in a Field. <laughs> Let's call that a temporary title until I come up with something better. I've used it before, trust me. I would call this kind of painting uh, a tree portrait. And I've sold a lot of them. I, you know, they're not necessarily my favorite kind of painting to do, but uh, sometimes I find the tree I think is nice. And this is um, this type of tree is called a totra, and they uh, it's at its um, young adult stage. Uh, they can get quite large and sort of resemble oaks. Actually, they can do all sorts of interesting things. So they're from out here in New Zealand, but. Uh, I like them best when they're sort of like an oak, you know, and not like the kind of oaks we get in California, which just look like big puff balls <laughs> in the scene because the uh, the foliage uh, hangs all the way down to the ground, you know. Don't ever paint those, by the way. Never paint a tree where you can't see a trunk. Right out of the gate, I'm throwing tips at you. Uh, just so you know, I'm working on uh, trying to get a channel up on Gab. Um, I won't go into any other kind of discourse about what's going on right now in the world, but uh, suffice to say, I'm pro-free speech, and that's where I'm going to leave it. Um, I'm on here for now, and uh, we'll continue uh, probably to uh, keep uh, doing videos for the meanwhile, but um, I'm definitely, and I have, those that know me know the channel, I know I have looked into other options and stuff. I just haven't found uh, pretty much everything else lacking, but something else is going to have to come along and, and replace uh, YT at some point. They're just too big, and uh, it's not healthy. Yeah, so I'll leave that there for now. Um, what do I want to say about tree portraits? So now I, I think I've painted this scene before. To be honest, I think I painted it larger. This is one of those, uh, actually the live video in the members area, about two hours long, so if you're looking to get into something, and actually think of it as a tree study, I call it a tree portrait, uh, you can see how, you know, I've done a pretty decent drawing there, I have good lighting on the tree, and you know, with trees, you know, you want to think in terms of shadow, mid-tone, highlight, you could try and break it into four, what I tend to do is I'll uh, I'll vary my color in the mid-tone and uh, so like on one side of the tree I'm going a little more cool and as I move up towards the top in the mid-tones I start oranging things up, ready, readying things up. Um, I have a lot of like little, uh, I wouldn't call them formulas because uh, every painting you know has got to stand on its own and it presents its own challenges but I have strategies I like that a lot better than the word formulas and um, you know one of my strategies is to go in get the get the shadows placed to get the composition set up and then um, you know do the sky and then restate the shadows and then do the midtones and you'll notice this uh, tree is going to be looking pretty good which is shadow and midtones so never, don't over rely on those highlights. Highlights are like gravy. Gravy is fantastic on your um, roast beef, you know. But too much gravy is just gross. It doesn't work, you know. And uh, gravy, you know, you want gravy to be tasty, not too salty. <laughs> Am I stressing, stressing the analogy? Um, so uh, today is uh, January 10th. It's a Sunday. And um, I thought, well, it's time to get around to another video. The last couple have been really nice, so I wouldn't say this painting's in the same league, but yeah, that's something, too. Let's just address that. You know, does it matter? No. Um, because you're not, it's, it's not a competition with yourself. <clears throat> painting is a process, and you have to be engaged with the process. You have to um, you have to do it every day. I really should approach painting like a shoemaker approaches making shoes. And if you're a good shoemaker, um, most of the shoes you make are, are great. You know, um, some might be especially great. Who knows? I'm not going to stress that analogy either. But you get the point. Uh, like a chef or like a shoemaker, it should be just something you do, 
and that you get better at as you accrue experience and the more experience you accrue of course um, the more that informs and assists your intuition in the um, thousands and thousands of decisions that go into every single painting right um, a good deal of those decisions are conscious but many of them are unconscious and I'm going to be doing a little reading today I'm just waiting for the ones that like to poop out around the six minute mark <coughs> just go ahead and leave um, and you can um, miss me reading from uh, Carlson's Guide to Landscape Painting by John F. Carlson. We we did some reading from that in the, not the last video, but the one before. Uh, and it was brilliant. It was right from the introduction. It's a very dense book. It's very text heavy, actually. Quite a bit different than how they do um, art books these days. These days, I'd say the, pardon me, the ratio of pictures to um, text is, you know, fairly equal, if not weighted more towards pictures, but one of the reasons for that would be, of course, color reproduction has become super affordable. But um, So I was hunting around. There's so much great stuff in this book. Uh, uh, I want to, uh, but uh, I, I <clears throat> came across an, uh, a topic of surface quality, and I think that's something great to adjust. Now, before we read what he has to say, I just want to say that I myself, uh, like I think a lot of uh, people that start off with sort of uh, an impressionist mindset, they don't care much about surface quality. It's not that critical. Oh, by the way, if you hear any noise in the background, we have a new puppy here, and he's had, having a nap. So I thought it would be a good time to get a video done, but whew, that's been a busy time with this little puppy. Yeah, he was requiring a lot of attention. He's crying a lot. He misses his brothers and sisters and all that. Anyway, uh, I uh, I went from this impressionist deal, you know, yeah, surface quality, schmurfus quality, you don't care. Uh, but I saw some um, American painting exhibition at the De Young Museum in San Francisco, and uh, you've heard me refer to it quite often if you've been around for a while. And this is one of the things that really pushed me into, I was already headed towards tonalism, uh, mostly due to uh, Stapleton Kern's um, blog, and when he started getting into a nest, I was like, "Oh, that's me! That's me right there." Not that I'm as good as George Ness, but I resonated with the spiritual and poetic approach to painting, you know. And you have to have a lens that you frame things with. The impressionist, I mean, you you can use oil paint, same oil paint, same brushes, same canvas, um, but different mindset than the tonalist. The tonalist had different aims than the Impressionists. And there can be quite a lot of crossover, so I'm not going to stress that either, you know. Plenty of people back then weren't calling themselves one or the other. But um, for for me, the definition is really as basic as uh, a tonalist is after a poetic and interpretive approach. And oftentimes an Impressionist is after capturing um, certain light effects that they're perceiving. And it's not to say that they're not capable of getting across an, uh, an emotional quality. I mean, if you ever seen like Mon Monet, I'm not even going to, I don't even consider consider Manet an impressionist. Just so you know, Monet or Pizarro or uh, Renoir, you know, they all get a good emotional uh, bit across. Anyway, let's see what. Uh, what Carlson's going to say. The word quality in, a, in painter's parlance means that richness of surface and pigment that usually follows repeated applications of color upon the canvas. Augmented by the use of glazes and by scumbling, scraping and repainting, it gives an added charm in a picture when it just happens. It might be said that a painter who consciously tries for quality usually misses other more important virtues in his work. I think it was Millet who said, uh, who called trying for quality a waste of time, yet Millet had quality. Quality corresponds to timber in the singer's voice. In painting, <laughs> in painting, color quality or color timber is that mysterious personal individual feeling for and mixing of the color for its own sake. Now this was key. and I don't know where you went riffing into that straight from surface quality, but he, 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 let's just read the rest of what he's got to say because we've got a limited time. Um, 
just remember that mixing of the color for its own sake. Even though 10 students of mine might use identical colors to begin with, the personal vision of color or quality is so individual in each that I would guarantee to name the owner of each palette in a stack of 10 palettes. There is no special way to mix color and no special way to apply it to the canvas. Neither is there any special way to quote unquote see color. The same reaction from certain light rays upon certain objects produces varied colors upon varied retinas. One person cannot ever name the color of any object to the entire satisfaction of another. The nerves of the eye do become more sensitive to color through the mere practice of seeing, such as a musician's ear is sharpened through constant practice. A painter in seeing a beautiful mass, say of a distant mountain, subconsciously segregates the various colors to which, in which to his trained eye the mass scintillates and modulates. Beautiful harmonies and transitions are sometimes seen with the eyes closed, or as Keats says of music, heard melodies are sweet, but those unheard are sweeter. A picture often attains quality when the artist has thought least about it, a fatness and richness of surface. Attained through repeated paintings, quality cannot be classif classified as a profound nor even important quality in a picture, but if one grain of beauty is added to the whole through this agency, no man has a right to reject it. Man, I think that's great. And when I saw the quality of the work of these uh, <coughs> painters that predated and run concurrent with Impressionism, which didn't put as much stock in quality, uh, surface quality, I was like, wow, the surface is just so beautiful. And the paintings are beautiful. So the point Carlson's making is like surface quality I have had beautiful surface quality on bad paintings, okay? That's, uh, surface quality alone isn't going to save your picture at all. But <coughs> a beautiful surface quality will add to the experience, and thus is worth going after. Um, and this is one of the things that drove me through the whole exodus into textured boards and things. And I'm not saying I won't go back to textured boards. I really love working on textured boards. I'm going through a smooth board phase and I have to work differently on the smooth board to get results that I like but um, as you can see in the sky things are a little softer a little you know um, I can I can really play off the texture when I have a textured board in fact I'm thinking am I even done this tree and sold it on a textured board if you were industrious you could search through the uh, the channel you might find it I'm thinking it was a 6x8. I'm thinking it was 2017 or 18. Could be. Don't know. Don't remember. Oh, I like making paintings. I like selling paintings. Um, so the other thing I want to talk about is the color. Like the, the number one thing people hit me with. And you know you're a true believer if you've gotten this far into the video. The number one question is what colors are you using? How did you get that color? And you know, I'm sorry, but if you listen to what Carlson just said, you mixing the color isn't the thing. Seeing the color is the thing, and you might not perceive the same color that I do, or if you are, you're not putting em you're not going to put emphasis on the same same colors that I do. So, I would say get really. That's why my an automatic answer to that is like go for a limited palette. Do your best with that limited palette to hit the colors that you're seeing so that you know your tools because you don't want to have it's just like uh, the analogy with music you know you if you're starting out uh, a bass a guitar and a drummer and a singer is probably the best way to go if you were starting out and I says well here's you know a 50 piece orchestra go for it you go I don't know what to do with all this you know or you can figure out how to do a song. One guy's tapping a rhythm, the other guy's playing along, you know, with a, a bass rhythm, and then you got a guitarist over the top, and then the singer, you know, he starts singing, right? Anyway, hopefully you got something out of uh, that book and uh, my insights as well. Uh, I appreciate you coming to my channel. You could tip on over to my store. Uh, there are some paintings for sale there. Um, always great to ship a painting somewhere else in the world. Yeah, I do all right here in New Zealand, but I love I love.
packing them up and shipping them out. Oh, oh. I better stop. I better turn that off. I'm glad I caught that because I got a chunk of um, this video that is uh, got some audio. Anyway, till I come back with another video for you, uh, take good care, stay out of trouble. You join the members area, go see the uh, the two and a half hour live. That's totally doable, and uh, yeah, I'm passing along a lot more insights and things there in the process of doing the painting. So. Anyway, be back real soon. Take good care. Stay out of trouble.